So hello and welcome to yet another one cricket exclusive with us. I have got a fascinating guest alongside us as you can see in the screen itself. Joining me is the former captain of West Indies cricket team and also one of the best ever wicketkeeper batters from the Caribbean land. He has garnered over 5000 runs across formats and also holds the record of the most T20I stumpings in an innings. Joining me as you can see in the screen itself it's all the way Dinesh Ramdin for you. So Dinesh a uh, very warm welcome to one cricket exclusives uh, looking forward to a great time how are you and how are you doing I'm fine I'm fine thanks for having me on this cricket show Yeah thank you so much uh, it's a pleasure to have you but before that uh, before we unfold the things over here uh, there's a request for all the fans all the ones who are viewing this make sure you subscribe this channel uh, one cricket and do not forget to download our application which will be given in the description below share the video and watch it till the end because there are a lot of exciting things that we're going to talk about so starting off uh, with your initials of career uh, dinesh uh, you know how actually like how actually your journey began like for every cricketer there are different journeys so how did you inspire to come into the field of cricket and take it professionally well it started um, as everyone does in village cricket where you know few of the neighbors get together play some cricket on the road and stuff like that I mean, yeah. at a young age of of five and six, I couldn't, you know, get on to to the roadway because of the traffic and stuff like that. I had to stay in my yard, and every time the ball came over, I have to retrieve it and get it back to those guys, you know. And seeing those guys play every evening, um, kind of inspired me to, to to go out and play on the road. And then eventually, they had little tournaments where they they played road road cricket against villages, which is yeah. which was which was exciting for me. and then um you know eventually when i got a bit older i started to play with those guys um you know go on the road probably started to play against little villages next right. door and then you know those sort of things escalated went on you know those guys saw the talent in me and went on to play softball tournaments and you know a lot of people saw me and said you know this guy can feel he can bat a bit um he should go on to play hardball which is yeah. which is um what what I'm playing now but yeah it all started back around my 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 little village there in Prisal um right. you know when I went to primary school um my grand grandfather used to to have two buckets of of softball where as I came home from school you yeah. know he threw a lot of balls at me and I I batted which which yeah which which really helped me and then from there I went on to play for my primary school which was Prisal government school um okay, yeah. you know the experience there playing with some bigger guys was, was fantastic um and those guys went on to represent Trinidad Tobago like Andy Jackson, Alvarado Bryce. Um those guys did well for themselves as well. So I mean getting that experience at a young age and then when I got into to play that cricket was was fantastic and you know myself even Ragunath Satish Naidu we had a nice Ravi Rampol all of us played Yeah. At that age group come true right through the under 13s and the 15s and the 19s which which we had a good good relationship good friendship throughout our our, our careers at primary school and club cricket yeah absolutely and that can be seen when both of you you and Ravi Rampal don the jersey in the CPL too <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah definitely uh, yeah. yeah we both live at the same village as well so myself yeah. him and um Aaron Ragunath we we represented West yeah. Indies at the 15 World Cup for three we were from, yeah. from the same cricket club so you know it was good so that's exciting i uh, will but uh, uh, as per like uh, sources and uh, how much as we have heard that you started off your journey uh, as a medium pacer right so how did the switch into the wicket keeping happen yeah well, one game well myself we used to you know bowl the, the new ball um and then Ravi Rampal was the first change. We had a couple of medium pacers in our okay. team, and then yeah. for one game we had a leg spinner, which is Ivan Ragunath. You know, yeah. he, he bowls a lot of googlies and leg spinners, and the keeper at the time, you know, he was mm. not picking and reading what was happening. And mm. the coach came and said, "You know, can someone keep?" And I said, "Yeah, I can try." And then, you know, I went behind the wicket after bowling. I had like. two catches two stumpings and he came to me and said he doesn't want me bowling fast anymore 
well, medium. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I I eventually, you know, started doing some little drills behind and and, mm. and took up wicket keeping mm. and said, look, this fast bowling, you know, it's it's easy to make a team by a keeper because um you can direct because, them from behind he, the stumps. Yeah, it was you. You have the best view in the house. You've seen everything yeah. what is happening. So absolutely. I mean, at the at the age of twelve, I said, "Look, I'll, I'll try it." And then I ended up playing for the under thirteen zone, the under fifteens. When we go to camps and and they ask for wicket keepers, there's like only two or three guys. So that, you know, my competition there was much. So it's easier to get into to, to some of those teams. Yeah. And I never really looked back from there. All right. Uh, so, and um, the other thing is that when you made your debut into the West Indies side, I think at the age of nineteen or twenty, you scored a fifty in your right in your debut game against Sri Lanka against the ranks of Chamin Devas, Muthaiya Mulidhar, and so big names, right? So, how did the surrounding respond uh, to that gritty knock from you? Yeah, it was challenging. I mean, playing against those world class bowlers in their Absolutely. conditions, in their backyard. I mean, you know, yeah. first game. Debut, a lot of pressure. I just went out to enjoy myself, which is most important. Mm. And um, you know, the likes of Amulitar and I see a lot of players play against him. Look at a lot of videos where players had tried to sweep their way out of him. Um, you know, when I saw the way of Brian Lara and, and Ramner Sau and those guys played against him in their conditions, you know, I, my ploy was to try and sweep as much as possible uh, and yeah. and defend the good balls. I mean, he, the he didn't like when, when players did that to him. So I, I tried that. That was my plan on that day. And it worked out for me. Um, I believe I could have gone on to get more. Um, I can remember that innings vividly right back of my mind where I got an inside edge and I was really, you know, yeah. got it by, by, by that. I could have, you know, probably yeah. gone on to get a century and debut. But, you know, it is, I, I was happy for the, the 50 still. Yeah, and speaking about the sweeps, uh, I remember uh, it made me remember those, those four sixes that you had Shahid Afridi in the CPL. And among that, there were two slog sweeps, if I remember. So what was it like, you know, hitting Shahid Afridi, you know, hitting someone like Shahid Afridi for four sixes in that particular game? It was simply unbelievable and it looked effortless, to be very honest. So was it any well, post-match conversation with him? <laughs> no, that? actually, it was... Um... So just playing uh, ball on merit in terms of the, the, the side that he came to bowl yeah. on, the breeze was going in yeah. that direction. So, I mean, I told the non strike at the time, I said, look, um, mm -hmm. this is a bowler we can try and target. You know, the first two came out the middle yeah. and I was like, you know, when you're in batting Come and you're on. in that particular zone, yeah. you just, just go for it and it happened. Um, I was trying to go for six of them, but it didn't, it didn't work out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The reaction says it all. I remember the reaction. Yeah. <laughs> After I think you missed the fifth ball, right? Uh, I yeah. think uh, you just got beaten on the out, outside half of the bat. And the last yeah. one went an inside edge or an outside edge. I don't remember that, but for behind four, the keeper yeah. for four. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. And uh, Dinesh, uh, like uh, uh, every human or every cricketer, as I mentioned, you know, everyone goes through crests and troughs, ups and, ups and downs in their career, right? So there was a time in your uh, career too, in your journey to during the 2010 or 11 phase, right? When... Uh, uh, when West Indies Cricket Board didn't renew the contract, the national contract with you. So it must have felt like a bombshell to you. And how did you respond to it? How did you react to it? And how uh, did it make you more stronger as a person? Yeah, most definitely. I think um, I took some things for granted in terms of just playing and not looking at where I am and, and where I could have been. And, mm -hmm. and my stats started to drop. And obviously, yeah. by, by doing that, they, they took the contract away. And then that probably hit me a bit. I came back in my first class setup and I scored over five or 600 runs or something like yes. that. And I, and, I, and I got back inside. But yeah, it, it hit me in terms of, yeah, you can't really take things for granted when you, when you play sport. Um, you always have to be on top of your game, no matter Absolutely. what it is. So not just only in cricket, but just on, on personal personal life as well. You have to be on top of things and, and stay focused because in a matter of seconds or, or these things can switch. So was, was all, all things happen for a reason. I, I was quite happy it made me stronger, uh, make me rethink a lot 
in terms of cricketing aspect and life aspect. And yeah, I'm happy where I am today. I, I, I don't have no regrets. Um, whatever I've achieved, I'm quite happy. You know, coming from a small village and, and playing so many games for West Indies, I never thought I'd have done it, winning World Cups as well. So yeah, I'm quite yeah. happy here. Yeah. Uh, yes, and uh, as one can say, you know, that uh, comeback should be better than the setbacks. And so you have proved it, right? You are one of the primary examples that we can cite that your comeback was much, much better than what the setback was. You know, coming back, hitting a century against England. So what was it all about? What was your mental preparation uh, going ahead? Yeah, it was all about just trying to stay focused. I went back and looked at some videos where I, I was successful. Where I, yeah. where I got out and how these guys are going to plan for me. And, um, you know, playing against England in, in England is always going to be challenging. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and then I, I was hitting the ball well. I was not getting the runs. And I, and I keep, you know, talking to Shiv, you know, yeah. to, to, to just stay there, get some runs, dig in as, as long as possible. And it, it came in one of those test matches at, at Leeds. Yeah, so you have uh, got a plenty of means a good amount of centuries uh, in your ranks, you know, bags, uh, 166, uh, 107 against England, few against Bangladesh. So which one is the favourite for you? Yeah, I would say um, the first one in, in Barbados against England, playing home was, yeah. was special for me. Batting with Ramner is that one, you know, he guided me through that. And, um, you know, every time I got to the 30s and 40s, I felt like, yeah, I was quite happy with that. But then he was like, you need to get 100. You need to start scoring because cricket has been changing, evolving where yeah. number six and seven are scoring 80s, 90s, 100. That changing changes the game uh, uh, and stuff like that. So it's very important that, uh, you know, he was there at, the, at that end. He scored 291 in that game as well. And, you know, by him guiding me through that, it, it always stayed with me and, and will continue to, whatever he shared with me, I will try to share it with other younger players that come through. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's the process, you know, how it came after, you know, generation-wise generation, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, speaking about that 107 against England, uh, Dinesh, uh, this is one thing that I think you must have uh, have to had to answer in every interviews. So, a pretty common one for you. But uh, this is a little bit uh, tricky. Tricky in the sense, I'm not going to directly ask you, like, what was it up to, like, uh, popping up that cheat paper from your pocket and you know saying uh, about Viv Richards uh, but I would ask you like how did your non-striker react to it like while you're doing <laughs> that thing <laughs> what was the reaction from the other end well I wasn't sure what, what he was doing all I remember that you know the ball pitched probably on middle and off and I turned it down fine leg yeah and I just ran took off my helmet put the, took the paper out yeah, and, 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 you know, it, it was just a emotional moment, but a passionate yeah. moment at the same time. Absolutely. Where, Absolutely. Um, you know, that brought all the best in me where he said, I should not be playing for West Indies anymore. They should bring younger players. And yeah. you know, sort of things brought, brought the best out of me. I mean, I saw him after. You know, did good. Chat, and, you know, he was like, you know, if I could give you that motivation, that's good for West Indies cricket going forward. So this is what Viv Richards told you, right? After the century. After. Yeah. Uh, so those right. sort of things. Players, some players take it in a good way. Some players take it in a bad way. And yeah. he said, the way you took it, you used it as something to motivate it. Motivated you to, to score 100. All right. All right, Dinesh. It's great to hear about these stories, you know. Uh, another thing I would like to ask you regarding this, like, the thing you know you wrote in the paper, you must have written in the day before that, right? So you were <laughs> mentally prepared. You were mentally prepared about it, right? That I'm gonna score a century. I'm gonna knock the bowlers out of the park or you know hit something. Right. Yeah, I had it uh, the day before. Um I written it down before the test match actually. Yeah. And um I just had it in my, my pocket batting and it was going well. I was on 70 odd and then and a couple of wickets fell. I was like I'm not going to get a century again. So I'll just like take my nut out. And then Tino came. And then he started to hit some balls out of the park. He started to spread the field. Yeah. And the focus was more on him rather than me. And while he was there, I was like 70, 80, 90, getting up close to it. Yes. And then, you know, eventually I got there. But yeah, the way he batted was exceptional. He should have scored a century there. But um, yeah, I think 
the, the, the occasion got, got the better of him. You know, he's trying to go for a six, but I mean, he batted exceptionally well at that time. All right, yeah. And uh, Dinesh, uh, you've been a leader uh, since uh, your uh, under-19 days, right? So, uh, you ha- and later on, uh, when you were handed over the test captaincy uh, of you know, West Indies team, uh, so what was it like? It, it must not have felt uh, that, uh, like, a huge burden on you because you have already uh, leaded a captain aside in your early days. Yeah, it was... Um... You know, in me throughout my career in terms of leading on the 15s and the 19s, so many teams coming through the ranks. Um, was 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 not a bad transition just to get yeah. all the guys on a collective collective page on 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 what we want to to have to have to achieve in terms of the international level, getting all the guys to bond into to to how to the processes of of winning test matches. I mean, mm. the, the 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 sessions by sessions, day by day, hour by hour, and yeah, we tried against some oppositions. It worked out in some sessions, and then you know we fall in a couple of sessions where where it cost us some games. So um, yeah, it was a good experience for me in terms of captaining West Indies. I mean, it was quite a shock when it came the way they they, they handled the situation in terms of taking it yes. away and and moving on. But you know, it it wasn't my call in terms of you know revoking and taking back the captaincy, but. I mean, I joined my, my time as, as captain. Yeah, and you had to fill the shoes of Darren Sami, who was known to be a very good captain for West Indies, won the champion T20 World Cup. Yeah, coming to it, you know, uh, you're a part of the T20 World Cup team, two-time champions, right? How does that feel? And which one is more sweeter, 2012 or 2016? <laughs> um, yeah, winning was, was, was amazing in terms of where, where we yeah. played outside of the Caribbean. Um, I would say the second one was, was, was a lot sweeter in terms of uh, playing India in the semi-finals at Mumbai in that stadium. Yeah. You know, we couldn't hear anything. I mean, and what yes. was special about India, the way that Pirat came and he played that innings, I mean, was a champion innings. And, and then, you know, when we, we started off with, with Johnson Charles and, and the way Lendell Simmons and Russell finished off the game, I mean, we had we had the first ball at Chaspit Bruma bowl to to Gil cutting him out, and then you hear in that crowd, you know, chasing one ninety it wasn't easy, and then you yes. know Lendell and those guys really kept the, the pressure on the Indians and beating them. They I thought that was the finals, and and then going on to to Kolkata where we had to play against England, we knew they were coming at us because we beat them in the first round, and. Um, yeah, we, we we thought we had it quite easily, but you know they yeah. kept picking up wickets at important times to put us on the back foot, and then to score twenty out in that last over with Carlos Prophet. I mean, no one ex- was expecting him to to do it like that Absolutely. because Marlon was that was insane on the other end. Yeah, Marlon was on the other end that going really great guns as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, he after the first two and for for bounce for sixes. I knew we were in a chance. And then the third one, well, when the third one was hit, I was run, running out on the field and it was like, no, 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 you can't go yet. You know, we, we need one more, a couple more. That's only 18. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, shit. And then, <laughs> um, you know, he, when he hit the last one, well, you know, that fourth one was just amazing. Amazing. And then running all there in the ground, the champion dance in the air and the celebrations. Yeah, Tell us a bit about the celebrations. Was- yeah, West Indies is yeah, known for the celebrations, right? That 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 tournament, DJ came out with the song "Champion," and we used that as a motivation yeah. as well. And then, yeah. um, you know, throughout the tournament, we had a couple ups and downs and stuff like that. But you know, there's a lot of things in the back background where we used to motivate us to go out and win this tournament, and, and we 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 did that. And and the, the celebrations were all through the night at the hotel. Um, some guys didn't sleep. You know, we had a, a photograph the next day, and you know, I think that was probably a very challenging morning for most of the guys to, to get up, change in the gear, take the picture. Yeah. But you know, it, it was worth it. Yeah, and um, now this is a champion story from 2016. There's another champion story, right? And just in the next year, but this a different tournament, the CPL Caribbean Premier League. 
TKR in the finals against the team which has the likes of Chris Gale and so so you playing a great great knock alongside Kevon Cooper who played a great cameo in the finals and winning it for TKR right in the Gonai Riders what was the mindset over there right because you were you guys were in a very very tricky situation at the moment and you just eased off things very very calmly yeah we were tight yard for four chasing one what 135 Um, yeah. Basically, I just wanted someone to bat with me, uh, but it, it, we just kept losing wickets. And I That's told okay. um, you know some of the guys, we just need a partnership of thirty-five and a twenty-five and stuff like that. Mm. But you know, when Kevin came, you know the 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 way he came, you know he spoke with so much confidence. He was like, he he calls me Joe. He said Joe, we're gonna do this tonight. I said okay, that's the attitude. So we started okay. to bat a few balls, and then um. You know, I said, look, this over here, we need to take a chance. And then the the eighteenth over, he hit Sheldon Cottrell over, come off a six. Yes, that was the last ball of that over. I think that that was the the, the game changer momentum where we 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 knew that the next over we're gonna go for a lot of runs in terms of Ben is gonna bowl. He's under a lot of pressure. He have not been bowling well. And um, you know, I got a single, and then he. You know, he teed off in that over. And, Absolutely, you know, it, was just, it was just fantastic where he finished off the game in that over. Absolutely, and you finished off the runs. You know, you hit the screening runs. Yes. Yeah, it was fantastic. But I think the way Kevin came, he was calm, um, and he mm. he delivered. He he really wanted to do that special because he was going through a lot of things behind the scene where his bowling action and stuff like that. He did. He was not playing throughout the tournament. And he really wanted to come out and do something special for the team and for himself and for the Absolutely. fans. And, you know, just trying to stay calm. He he can go, and I will try to bat probably the last over, whatever we need. You know, and it finished in the in the nineteenth over, which was just amazing, and the celebrations were going crazy after that in the dressing room. All right. So Dinesh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, you know uh, about your nickname, Joe. I guess you have a few more nicknames too, right? Uh, Shorter, Shortzy. I think the uh, Polat calls you something like that, Shorty or so. So, what is the mystery behind this name? Like, how did it come up from Dinesh Ramdin to Shorty or Shorter? <laughs> yeah, it all. Um, we played a, a, a Caribbean fifty uh, over final, two thousand and four, two thousand and five in Barbados one year, and oh, really? we were under the pump, and we needed, you know, probably seventy odd and forty odd balls, and hmm. You know, I just went out and and from the first ball go, you know, saw a couple fours, maybe a couple sixes. I right. had a quick fire, thirty yard in in quick time, which changed it, changed the game. And then well, a couple of the guys were like, "Wait, you you play a lot of shots, you know? You should call you Shutter or Shoppy and stuff like that." And then you know, like it doesn't matter which whichever one you guys feel it's easy. And then one of the guys, you know, he said, sh- sh- "Shutter." And that probably stuck with me for for that over a long period of time. And you know, everyone has a a short name. You know, that, absolutely. That someone will call you by so. And then you know, a couple of games later, we were playing a a, a same four day match, and there were a couple mm-hmm. buys that went by, and a, a okay. couple of guys like, hey, you should be a shopkeeper. You know, <laughs> you're not keeping anything. Da da da. It started to make sense. Okay. So, yeah, I understand. That, Funny banter. So that's where, yeah. You know, good good banter okay. within ourselves, and so that's yeah, where Shota absolutely. came in, and then Shoppy came in. So, um, it was good fun, and and those names stuck with me for over the last fifteen, sixteen years. So, yeah, it's cool. Okay, so we actually see a lot of banters happening. You know, be, be it between DJ Bravo and Karan Pollard, Andre Russell gets into some sometimes. You know, especially Pollard. So, what is it like? You have been in that surroundings, in that environment. So, who who is the one who initiates this these things? Well, those guys are friends for a very long time. But when they go on the field, it's it's yeah. it's really about you know getting the job done, but at the same time entertaining. And those guys have entertained over there. Last fifteen twenty years in, in the careers, so um, yes, who who's the best? Who's the best at that point in time? If if DJ can can get him out, or if Pollard can hit him a few sixes, uh, and the battle has been always going on, including GR. You know, when he goes to bat, you know, yeah. he wants to to be the guy who will hit five sixes and over win a game. I mean, it's it's fantastic, but you know, I mean, 
now he's with the Knight Rider family. So with him and Paula are, are this, on the same team, and it's going to be some fireworks in, in this 2022 edition of the CPL. And um, it's, it's going to order just good for the, for, the, for the TV, the fans, everyone who is locked on to the, to the Caribbean Premier League. So, Absolutely. I mean, it's always fantastic to have guys. It's always fantastic. This, someone run up the ball to Chris Gale for the first ball and goes back over your head for six. I mean, you know, you're locked in. You, you want to see what's going to happen in the next ball. And, and that's, that's the type of Caribbean players that has been coming through. I mean, a young Nicholas Poran who has been, you know, rewarded for his success for so far, who has been doing well, and he's the West Indies ODI captain. Now, I mean, he's an exciting player who has a lot of potential and, and stuff to go to go fine cricket. So it's very important that he continue to stay humble, get the guys to rally around him, and I have no doubt they, they can go places. Absolutely. You know, very much agree with you, Dinesh. And... Uh, now, uh, there is one thing that I would la- like to ask you, you know, before we move to a next segment, which is off the field, like way I'm going to explain it to the viewers what it is all about. Uh, but the last question is all about, you know, it's something which I am curious of. Right. Uh, and uh, I think uh, I've seen a lot of wicket keepers around the globe, you know, they always don a full sleeve sh- jersey. Like whenever they are, uh, I don't see wicket keepers in half sleeves while keeping. Uh, I have asked it to a few other wicket keepers, to Mangalis or Mosley of South Africa and few others. What is the logic behind? Like, what is it you need to don the full sleeves while wicket keeping? Yeah, I think uh, it's easy when you, you you're throwing yourself around on the on the on the yeah. ground. You know those bruised elbows and stuff like that. You know, um, right. sometimes those stuff get into your hand. Um, it it just just to prevent it, but it's it's all comfortable. All right. I mean, when you're when you're playing for the games and the sun is very hot, you know, you need that extra sleeve to, to take away that sun. But I mean, I, I use it to keep, I use it to bat. I mean, it's, it's it doesn't bother me in terms of if it's long uh, to bat or to keep in terms of, well, I normally order most of my, if it's six t-shirts, two short sleeve, four long sleeve. I mean, most of the cricket is T20 and T10 now. So, I mean, it's it's, it's good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, Dinesh, uh, we'll move to the next segment at the moment, uh, and that is off the field. And uh, what we're going to do here is that I'm going to name 10 cricketers over here, right? And uh, there'll be one bonus cricketer in the end. I'm going to reveal it later. Uh, so, I'm going to name 10 cricketers, and you need to tell me one good thing about them and a funny part. The other one is one funny part about them. Uh, for example, someone can be messy in the dressing room, so you need to mention it out, right? So, here we go with the names. Ready? And uh, uh, you need to mention it a bit rapidly if you can. Right. I'll try. <laughs> There's a channel. Sure. Okay. So uh, I'll go off with the first name. And that is uh, Shiv Narayan Chandapal. Good mm, thing. Very. Yeah. He's very p- p- particular with whatever he does. Okay. And the funny part. Funny part. Um... Yeah, he he always always makes mischief in terms of moving a guy, moving around stuff from guys' bags. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, so the next cricketer, it's the former captain Karan Pollard. Yeah, funny guy. He always makes jokes on and off the field. You know, if, if it's someone's birthday, he takes a cake and put it all over his face. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. And was a good thing about Pollard. Pollard, his leadership skills, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, DJ Bravo. DJ Bravo. Very messy guy in the dressing room. His stuff is all over the place. I, I'm waiting for the uh, reply what Bravo gives, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll be waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the best part about DJ? DJ Bravo, um, you know, he's always up for a challenge. He doesn't back down. Okay. Uh, next, Marlon Samuels. Marlon Samuels, um, very moody guy. <laughs> okay. Um, and funny moments is, is when 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 you, you win games, he's, he's the loudest in the gesture room. Okay. Uh, Tino Best. Tino Best. Um, you know, very, very neat guy. Always, you know, keeps okay. his head very clean, shine. Yeah. And um, yeah. All right. Uh, funny, fiddle... funny moment, yeah. Yeah, funny moment of Tino Best. Funny moment of Tino Best, you know, he'll come at you. 
he will just say things that sometimes doesn't make sense. All right. The next one, Fidel Edwards. You Fidel can't see Edwards. <laughs> yeah, he you know, he he goes really rapidly quick and and funny moments um yeah when he goes to bat he believes he's a he's a top order batsman he's going to score a century. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> Okay so this is something which is unheard about uh, Fidel Edwards um, the next one Sunil Narayan Sunil Narayan very particular everything must be in line if someone moves something he's cra- he's crossed he's he's going to get an early upset funny moments um you know he he's a guy who who takes the stuff in so for for he loves celebrating someone else's birthday Okay, okay. Uh Andre Russell. Andre Russell. I mean, he's just he loves cars. <laughs> <laughs> he loves his cars. Uh funny moments, you know, he was just yeah, We like, saw him getting a very I think he got a new car very soon right. He was yeah. posted in social media. Yeah. New car. And funny part. One car. Yeah, funny part. He is easy going. He will make you laugh for anything. All right. Uh Carlos Brathwaite, Ricky. Ricky, um, you know he he has a routine. He does all his things things by the book. Funny guy. Um, yeah, he was just just find something to do to make you funny, man. All right. And uh, last but not the least, the universe boss, Christopher Henry Gale. That's the most craziest guy ever. He always has fun. Um, whatever he does, is it off the field or on the field? but yeah once it's off the field his parties are the best <laughs> at his house <laughs> okay uh, and uh, uh, we have completed with 10 cricketers but as i mentioned there was a bonus and that is your you yourself dinesh dinesh ramden what is the most best part about dinesh ramden and the funny part best part of 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 learn to play golf which is fantastic <laughs> all right from your brother <laughs> playing golf <laughs> Oh uh, so just casual from friends and um, okay. yeah no no funny moments really um i like to joke around in the dressing room and stuff like that but that's about it all right so uh dinesh uh, so we come to the very q end of our session uh, and therefore you know there's a last task which is left for you and that is uh, you need to make a playing 11 you know according to your opinions according to your views based on the upcoming t20 world cup for west indies right so who should be the openers for you and then carry forward yeah i have like um guys like brandon king um All right. you have mayers you have nicolas puran oh. um you have shay hope is in there we have right. uh What's his name? You have a few players there. They have Azari Jose. Rostan Chase. Rostan Chase. They have. Uh... Let's go. Let's go in order. Like if if I mention uh, who's gonna open is Brandon King, Carl Myers. Then uh, you tell uh, you know I think Shea Hope and. Uh... Yeah, Shea Hope. Then you have uh, Rostan Chase. Yeah. Then you Nicholas have Spuran. Nicholas Puran. Yeah. You have Shimran Hetty Maya. Hetty Maya. Oh, uh, yeah. She needs to be in there. They have Odin Smith, all rounder. They have a uh, Shepherd who's in there. They have Ramari young Kimo Shepard. Paul who's Ramar Shepherd. Kimo Paul yeah. has been doing good. I would I would carry young Shafin Rutherford, an extra extra explosive batsman down in the middle there. All right. All then right. you then you have Fabian Allen who does some work for you. Absolutely. With the both bat and ball, you yeah. have Akil Hussain. Achilles um, has been brilliant. Yeah. You have Jaden Seals out and out fast bowler as Ari Joseph because he's going to be in Australia need some some quick bowlers down there. So Absolutely. um those are the players that will, will make up the type of 11 with a few other players who you know if they do as well in the CPL will will get a chance as well. All right. Uh so okay so guys this is the team of dinesh ramden for west indies cricket team and uh, dinesh before we end things off uh, and end this session you know uh, i would like to tell you that uh, what is that last one message you would like to tell all those upcoming cricketers who wishes to grow up as a wicketkeeper batter 
it's all about having that passion and love for the sport. I mean, yeah. you, you, you get some days you have good days, some days you have bad days, but at the end of the day, you have to have some sort of discipline. And, you know, the discipline that will take you take you where you want to be and, and your goals that you want to achieve. So it's very important you have that discipline and self-belief. You know, you just keep believing in yourself. Some days you'll have, as I said, bad days, good days. You take those bad days, turn it into experiences that you have learned and, and you'll become better and great one day. Absolutely. So, all right. Uh, so, as we come to the Q end of this session, and uh, it was a lovely time chatting with you, Dinesh. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this session. We did. I personally did. And uh, it was lovely to have one of the, you know, you grow up as a kid, you know, watch Dinesh Ramdin bat and getting to chat with you is really, really terrific. And uh, I hope it's the same from your end. Anything that you would like to say about uh, our channel in the end? Well, it was fantastic having me. I just hope that a lot, of, a lot of cricketers, you can get them to do much more interviews, get their insights, and a, a lot of young players around the world can see that where they came from, what they have, have achieved, how they have achieved it, the ups and downs and, and stuff like that. So it's always good to get those insights and, and other younger players will use that to, to motivate them to become not just any good cricketers, but good individuals in, in life as well. All right. So, guys, thank you so much. And I hope you have enjoyed this session with Dinesh Ramdin. There will be many more coming in. Until then, stay tuned to One Cricket Network. Subscribe the channel. Share the video. Do not forget to put down your valuable comments and like it too. Yeah. Subscribe to One Cricket and sh share the videos.